doing the bird tutorial. If I sound a bit weird, it's because I'm sick. I'm not looking for sympathy, but it is fun to let people know and make an excuse for things. So the first thing we're gonna need is a bird model, of course, and I've elected to use Sketchfab and say we want one that we can download and is animated. We find a low quality model and make it uh, better. And if I switch to the animation, you can see it has a bit of a fly cycle. I'm imagining we're gonna put a camera on the top of this and literally connect it to the mesh. I'm gonna use an FBX because it has the animation data. So delete everything and I'm gonna import in an FBX and there it is. Now one thing to note is that this animation is kind of limited to a certain number of frames. Of course we can take this animation and repeat it. We can do this by like duplicating the keyframes a bunch of times. Instead I'm gonna go to the non-linear animation thing. Click this button which kind of gives us a strip. Hit the end menu and in action clip there should be a repeat function. I'm gonna make that 20. Makes our animation go again and again and again. What I want to do is I want to put a camera kind of on top of this like a GoPro. Before I do that, I'm just going to scale this thing down and let's add in a camera that I'm going to position above and have camera to view so we can actually navigate ourselves. We should have a very extreme focal length. And I think I like this angle right here, which looks good, except like we're kind of seeing the butt of this thing. So I'm going to find a frame that I like. I think this one's okay. And this is going to be the frame where we're going to parent or attach this. So select the bird, go to edit mode. If it kind of goes to the bottom, you can just click these buttons. I'm going to select a vertex that I want to parent this to. Control click the camera, control P to make a vertex parent. It's going to follow the deformation. And from the camera view, we now have this kind of fly thing. I do not want to see the background. Let's add more camera motion. Okay, so keyframe, location, rotation. Now in the graph editor, we get these graphs that we can add some noise to. So the first thing I want to affect is the X rotation. This is kind of like the up and down rotation which should be the most violent. And for this, I'm gonna add a noise that looks like that, very extreme. Bring down the scale, bring down the strength. This is shaky, but I wouldn't say that it's too shaky. Copy this and go to the Z rotation. That's going to be this like left and right motion. And I'm gonna paste this, make sure you set the offset to something different so the X and the Z aren't in sync. I've decided to pick these settings, which has a look that I like. Now the obvious question, what is this bird flying over, right? It's like in place technically. We need something beneath it. And instead of modeling it procedurally or whatever, we're gonna use Google Earth. Cause what could be better than literally having a model of the earth? Look at that. Uh, I'm just gonna pick a random spot. I'm just gonna make sure that the area I pick looks at least somewhat tileable. Just try your best. I'm gonna rotate it so it's kind of aligned forwards. We have a save image button, which will basically take a fancy screenshot. For the screenshot, I don't want anything like overlaying on top of this. And then I can also have it use like a giant resolution and save the image. Do, 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 do. I'm just going to make a plane and make it way bigger, maybe like 10 times bigger. And we're going to do all our modeling and shading both inside the material. I actually don't want to use a principled BSDF because I just want something simple like a diffuse shader. And for the color, I'm going to use this image that we just created. Because it wasn't a one by one like aspect, it's going to look a bit like compressed. So I'm just going to stretch this back out and look at all this detail. We can zoom in pretty far. Of course, I don't need this terrain behind the bird. No need for it all the way over here. So I'm going to go into cycles. Very importantly, make sure your feature set is on experimental. This will not work otherwise. And in the material, I'm going to go to settings and make sure displacement only is selected because we're going to use displacement mapping. And for now, I'm going to make my world shader a bit brighter. We don't actually have a displacement map, so we're just going to fake it. And it's going to look weird, but from the bird's point of view, it's going to be fine. So this is RGB to black and white. It's just literally going to take our loom this is what we're going to use for the height. And you can see this is all still one plane, even though the mid-level seems to be affecting it. That's because we need more geometry. So I'm going to subdivision surface on simple. And then instead of like adding geometry this way, which seems very like suboptimal. I'm going to click adaptive subdivision. You should know that whatever number I set this to is for the render. The viewport's going to be much lower quality. Take the scale and lower it. Now, of course, this doesn't look great. So just to ease it a little, we're literally going to use a uh, ease function. And just to make it so that we don't have a bunch of clusters of spikes, but it actually looks like a lot of this is elevated. With this color ramp, I can bring this down, which on average will make more of this get displaced. And from the bird's point of view, you can see there's so much like like motion blur and shake, you're not gonna be able to tell. Speaking of the bird's point of view, this needs to extend till 
the horizon or infinity. So I'm gonna add a array modifier. I'm gonna make this go on the Y axis so that I can keep repeating it maybe seven times. Also, we can add another array modifier. This one will be on the X axis and then just kind of shift this down. And just to break this tiling a bit, you can see these uh, features look pretty distinctive. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of a shove. I'm gonna do this by messing with the array settings. So I'm just gonna like add some X, which you can see makes this a bit more diagonal. And then on this X axis, we bring it down until these pieces pretty much fit together. But for the armature, which actually controls like everything here, I'm just gonna do a bit of a driver so that we don't need to animate it ourselves. So when I go on the Y axis, you can see this is the correct axis. What this means is it will take the frame number and make it much slower. So you can see now we are actually heading backwards. Let's correct that with the minus sign. I'll do it by like 12. The bigger the denominator, the slower it's gonna be. Minor things before I continue is I'm just gonna make this a more cinematic resolution. Resolution. I'm picking 1400 pixels because it will render faster and I'm gonna use that 2.35 aspect ratio that you know movies seem to love. I'm not really seeing the back of this uh, bird much anymore. So to fix that I'm just gonna take my camera and move it back just a little making sure to add in my keyframes on the first frame. Next step let's do lighting that doesn't look stupid. So in the world settings I'm not just gonna use like a constant thing. I'm gonna use a sky texture instead of an HDRI because I found that the sky sky texture really gives it the believability I'm looking for. Instead of changing the sun intensity, I'm just gonna do this in the background so it's less crazy. So just kind of figure out what the number you like is. And also don't forget to play with the elevation. And for the altitude, I'm gonna make this significantly higher. It will really just make it look like we have a bit more sky here. So clearly there's a lot more work to do on this. Like from every angle, it doesn't look great. But I think the first thing I wanna tackle is maybe a bit of atmospherics just to make the scene look more realistic to begin with. And for me, that also includes adding in depth of field. So I'm just gonna enable depth of field and then in look dev mode. So something like that will focus on the bird, but of course we have an extremely shallow depth of field. So I'm just gonna kinda play with these settings until it looks better. And now let's add in some actual atmospherics because this thing is gonna be going through the clouds. The clouds are gonna cast shadows. So Instead of doing this in the uh, world volume settings, I'm just gonna make a, a bounding box for our volume. So this is literally going to be a box. I wasn't joking. So now this entire thing is in a box, which is why I can't see anything. So here you can see the box. I don't want there to actually be a, a surface. So I'm gonna make a material. Uh, we don't need a surface. Instead, I just want a, a volumetric. So connect that. If you're not seeing anything, that's because Cycles has a bit of a glitch where you have to go back to it. And as we take the density and lower it, we're gonna be able to see more and more uh, where we can actually see some of our terrain. But to make this more interesting, because now we've just basically blurred everything in some sense, take a, a noise texture and view that. This is going to let us kind of modify our clouds. I'm going to filter this through a color ramp so that this is a bit higher contrast, setting it to ease. And if I zoom in on this, it kind of looks very blobular. So I'm going to up the detail and definitely increase the roughness. Disconnect this and connect it to the density, uh, which will still be a bit overpowering. So final step is take a, a multiplication and just bring that down. So now we have some sections that do and don't have clouds. Just to make that more visible, I'm going to make the cloud super white, if not just the tiniest bit blue. And I'm going to add a addition slider over here, which will let me kind of control the uh, breaking of the clouds. Also, the scale is going to literally be the scale of the clouds. So if you make this really big, it's going to be very like wispy clouds. Whereas if you make this small, you're going to have much bigger uh, cloud formation. I guess there's no reason why we can't have both. So maybe this one can have a higher scale maximum. So it's going to keep the bigger of the two. So it's in some sense going to mix them. And I think I'm happy with the settings that I picked. I'm going to be using the AGX view transform, which is being added to Blender. Make sure this is set to punchy. So this is before and after. Enable motion blur, because that's going to be a big part of this. When I'm looking at this render, I think it looks okay. But definitely the worst looking part of this by far is is the bird, which is a big deal because it's like in the foreground, especially this orange red is a bit too powerful. So starting off, I'm going to go to this bird, which I think technically is a dove. And I want to play with this a uh, base color. I also don't know why it's metallic. For this base color, I want to kind of get rid of the red. So I'm going to take the saturation and bring it down, not all the way so that there's still a bit of a hint of red. In fact, we can use the hue slider to change the color of that. And I also want this bird to be a bit brighter because I think the black kind of looks 
looks uh, a bit weird. Additionally, this does not have a, a normal map. I'm just gonna get rid of this and make my own. So use a bump map and connect the height to the thing and the thing to the thing. And this will give us a very fake, but probably increase the quality a bit, a normal map where I can contain this by bringing down the distance and the strength. Now, what I'm about to do is a little controversial as to whether or not it looks better, but if you take the subsurface and bring it up, you're gonna see light kind of like pouring through these feathers, and that's because the feathers are the thinnest part of this. But I think if we make this subtle, I think it should like add. It's definitely too red, and I think the way to fix this is to play with the radius values, and it's kind of like this like back and forth game until you like the way it looks. And I just realized that this model, for some reason, does not come with any specular. By the way, if your blender doesn't look like this, or at least your principled BSDF, that's because I'm using a new version. Uh, so I want to take this IOR level, which you can think of as the amount of specular. This should be at like 0.5 at least. I mean, it already incorporates this way better with the scene. I'm also going to tint this a little. Is it like accurate? No. And I know I'm nitpicking here but it's my render, you know? The shadows are looking very like sharp and intense. The way to fix this is with the sun size. As I increase this, it's going to soften the shadows a bit. And just so you see, we're actually making a difference. This is our previous render and this is our new one. And again, this is without any compositing yet. So if it looks good to begin with, hooey, it's gonna look even better later. Now, again, I think the weakest part of this is definitely the bird and specifically the head is very like low poly. I mean, look at how low poly this is. So in the modifier, you can see we have our armature, this is what rigs it. And I'm gonna try adding a subdivision surface above this so that the rigging happens first and then we smooth it out. But it's kind of breaking my model here. And even if I do the other way, which I guess wouldn't be correct, it's still breaking our model. And what this communicates to me is that this is a problem with the model. Not with us, with the model. And in edit mode, everything seems to be fine. But if I run A, let's do a merge by distance, you're gonna see all of a sudden we got rid of 1,075 vertices. That probably should have been connected from the get-go. Let's try enabling our subdivision surface. And yeah, I mean, look at the head before and after. However, now we have a new issue where I guess like the camera isn't synced anymore. So I'm going to position the camera back over this. And again, in the dove model, I'm just gonna select a vertex that represents what I want. Control click the camera, control P to make a vertex parent. And it is once again connected, looking at that bird ass. Now I've been saving the best for last in terms of realism, and that is going to be adding fur to this bird. I don't know if that's anatomically correct or what. Go to the particle settings and add a particle system and you're thinking oh what does what is this going to do but we want them to be hair particles which creates our porcupine boy obviously we're gonna take the length and bring it down substantially and just so we can see what we're doing I'm gonna increase the number to 4,000 so in the particle edit workspace we have a whole bunch of stuff here I'm gonna start off with the scissors which means have no hair obviously we don't want hair on the beak so I'm gonna cut those off we would not have hair in the eyes and another thing I want to do is combing. It's going to make our fur kind of go in the direction that we want. So just kind of play with this. We can always change it later. To view this, we are going to go to children, go to interpolated, which you can see adds a bunch of hair, but we can take this thing ridiculously high. So this uh, display amount is going to be how much uh, fur we see here. Normally you want these numbers to be different so we can actually see what's going on. And in the render, that's when it like, you know, creates a bunch of stuff, but I think we're going to be able to handle it. We are going to go to some of these shaping options and like change them. So for the uniform roughness, bring this up a bit. This is what's going to kind of create some, you know, I guess roughness is a good word for it. I'm going to bring down the size so that the um, displacement stuff isn't like big trends, but actually smaller ones. Another thing I want to add is probably clumping since I think that looks realistic. So this is going to, you know, make it in clumps. Now, before we change the kind of size of this hair, you always have to go to the curve settings in the uh, render panel. And I think you go to viewport display and change this to strip. I want a larger root. Now, it's not the best looking fur in the world, but it's definitely a start. What I want to do is I want to have two different materials, one for the hair and one for the rest of it. So for the hair, we're going to use something called a, a principled hair biestia. In curves info, we have a whole bunch of information like is strand that tells us what section is hair, also where it intercepts, also the length and a whole uh, bunch of kind of stuff. So obviously we're going to mix these two shaders together using the is strand. Now, of course, all this hair is brown, kind of looks freaky, really. I want this to correspond
correspond with my base color. So I'm literally going to connect that in. By the way, if you want to see the changes I made, I just did a bit of a function for the color. I was starting to render a frame and I saw this like motion blur glitch, which I've seen a couple times. If you see that, quick tip, go to the normals of the dove mesh and disable auto smooth. It tries to update it every frame, which doesn't work. Just for comparison, this is where we started off, right? The bird was definitely the weakest part, especially the red draws your attention and it looks bad. We did a bit of a correction, so already a huge improvement and now i think the fur adds quite a bit so original final okay we're gonna do some compositing so make sure you have your basic uh, nodes here and before we render just a couple passes that i think will be useful mist pass for sure let's do ambient occlusion let's also do the environment and just for safe measure we'll do a crypto map just check our mist pass which we can do right here that we can control if we go to the world settings and go to mist so i could bring the start way closer so you can see kind of the stuff going through the feathers. I think something like this looks a lot better than what I had. So here we have our main image. Let's see what else we have. Of course, we have our mist pass. I'm gonna do that for extra fog. We have our environment pass, which we can mess with the sky. We have ambient occlusion. And of course we have our uh, crypto mat. So just plug in ambient occlusion and make sure this is set to multiply to blend this correctly. This is gonna work, but it's gonna kind of cut out our environment. Now to fix this, we could do some weird stuff, but I'm just gonna go to the ambient occlusion pass. And you're gonna see that the sky is already basically blacked out. Take this and use it as a factor. Next thing I wanna add is our mist. So again, do another mix RGB. I don't know why my co compositing is so slow today. Set this one to addition and plug in the mist pass. So this is what it looks like before uh, the mist and here is after. Just adds like more depth in some sense. Stuff in the distance will kind of become more blue. So I guess it's the blue shift effect. So for this color, I'm just gonna make it like slightly more blue. I think it adds quite a bit. Now one easy thing I like to do is play around with my exposure and gamma, which is basically like quick color correcting. And now let's add in the more ridiculous ones. First of all, we always have our lens distortion. This always comes at the end of the network. I'm gonna set both of these to 0.02 so that it doesn't like get rid of the corners of our frame. Make sure hit fit. Next, I want to add in our glare. I'm going to use the fog version. We just get much more of like an angelic look. In fact, I'm going to bring up the size and then very slightly bring down the strength, which is what a negative number does. I like to add in a filter set to soften. That's fine. It's just going to very, very slightly blur our image. Now, a bit of an extreme effect is I'm going to add in a blur. I think it's a bilateral blur. And the reason I'm adding this is not necessarily to blur it on the X or the Y axis, but more radially, like we're zooming. Just bump up the number to like 0.15, which makes it look insane. So just bring up your iterations as well. This is what really gives us the sense of speed, but you know, probably too much speed. So I'm just gonna bring that down. I kind of like the look of a more saturated image. Yeah, that definitely makes the sky pop out a bit more. I think we've added quite a bit to it. I think it looks better. Now, if you want the uh, blend file with everything included, there's a link in the description, which leads to Patreon. Also, there's links to all the sounds and the bird model that I used. <laughs>